now that this is done let's try to compile this code let's have a look at what's there in the java class that maven has built for us okay it's just a main method with a hello world which works fine enough for us now in order to compile uh, our maven application we first need to go to the directory in which we have the pom.xml so this is the application directory so make sure you're over there and then what we need to do is issue a command mvn compile now maven takes care of downloading all the related dependencies that you've mentioned in your pom.xml and uh, it's going to get that ready and it's going to do the compilation of the java classes in your application directory again it's downloading all the plugins so if it's the first time you're running this this might take a while and there you go the compilation is done now you don't have to compile each and every class now say you have uh, 100 classes inside your src folder src main folder now, all those classes will be compiled and uh, it'll be available ready so now once all the compilation is done now i need to package this so again i use a mvn package command now it's going to package this into a jar file might download more plugins in the process okay now the packaging is done and uh, and you can see here it building jar it has created the jar in the target folder and it's uh, maven test app and the version dot jar uh, what this is actually also done is it has also run our JUnit test cases say for example in this um, src test say i had test cases for all my uh, code in the src main folder then maven would run all those test cases as well every time it does a compile so we don't have to worry about manually running the test cases ourselves so it's done automatically now we have the jar ready now let's execute it it's an uh, target jar name and uh, Don't remember the class name. Let's look that up. It's app. Well, you see the hello world. So this class is executed, and uh, you will see the hello world message. There's a lot of things that Maven has done for us in the background. So let's have a quick overview of what Maven has. Uh, of all the things that Maven has done for us. Okay, to give a very broad outline of what happened, we installed Maven in our development environment. Now, as I told you before, Maven gets all its knowledge from the Maven repository. And the Maven repository has two types of information, the archetype information and the dependency information. The archetype information has details about different types of projects that you want to create and the folder structure and uh, all the required information about creating a new project of that particular type. And the dependency information is a list of all the jar files that you normally use and uh, the other jars that are dependent on the jar that you need. So the first thing that we did was we used the archetype colon generate command. And what that did was, you know, Maven went to the archetype information repository over here and uh, it got all the required information about the type of project that we are doing. Uh, we mentioned the default selection and uh, that just created a simple uh, you know, simple application class. And uh, it was just one class with a related uh, test class along with it. Now, once we issued that command, Maven knew that this is the kind of application that I was trying to develop. And it got all the related information and created the directory structure 
based on that particular application. And now I'd also given what is called as the group ID and the artifact ID. Now the group ID you know, informs Maven that this particular project belongs to this group and it is analogous to what we use as packages when developing classes. And we also mentioned the artifact ID, which is the ID of the artifact that we're going to generate out of building the application that we are planning to write. In that case, it is a simple jar file because we just used a archetype for, you know, that had only a class. Now, after the generate command was issued, you know, Maven got the directory structure information and it also created what is the called as the POM file. So the POM.xml has information about the project that we're trying to create, including uh, the group ID and the artifact ID. And it also has information about dependencies. If you want to add more dependencies in your application, you would add that to the POM.xml. Now, by default, since we have created a simple application, it had only JUnit as the dependency. So that dependency was uh, entered into POM.xml by default, and uh, that was made available. Now, once this is ready, all we did was we did a compile and package. Now, when we did a compile and a package, Maven realizes that POM.xml has this JUnit dependency, and now it goes to the dependency information in the Maven repository and checks what are the other dependent jars that it needs to get. Say I had depend I had dependencies on five different jars and I had mentioned it in the POM.xml, Maven is gonna check for dependencies for all those five jars. So first it's gonna download those jars and uh, since we also mentioned the version of the jars in the POM.xml, it's gonna get the right version and it's also gonna look for dependencies of for that version of the jars and it's gonna download them and make them available over here. And then once this is done, it's gonna compile and uh, generate the class files. And now if you do a package command, it's gonna generate the built package, in which in our case is a jar file. So Maven is doing all this in the background. And uh, since we have selected the archetype, it has information about what the build commands are and what the jars are. So we can override the default behaviors by specifying a different archetype or by, by taking the default archetype itself and specifying different dependencies or different uh, you know, application related data in the POM.xml. We will have a look at what changes we can make in the next tutorial.